Hello folks. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done one of these movie review vlogs. Um <clears throat> two basic reasons for this which I'll go into real quick. Um first the second I have had uh planned uh movies I wanted to do a review of, <clears throat> or, you know, watch and see if they had potential for, um, I did, I, uh, I was looking forward to seeing, um, The House with a Clock in Its Walls, because I have, uh, I have, you know, read the source material for that, and, you know, the, the John, the John Bellairs books, which are Good, you should check them out. And uh, you know, I thought, you know, I was so I was, I was actually that that probably would have been, you know, would have been the, one of the videos preceding this one, maybe immediately preceding. Except my car went and cacked it. <laughs> it my car, which you know, I uh, faithful old thing, which has served me well for many years. I mean, and it was old when I when I got it. I got it second hand. But it finally I had some I'd had some some brake problems which you know, I won't go to here but you know, if you ever you know, there's a harrowing story I could tell you but it would take up too much time. And, but and as actually I was going to get the, that checked out when my radiator blew up. You know, it's just like, one moment everything's fine, the next, hmm, the, the engine isn't responding as well as it might. Oh, look at all those clouds of steam billowing out from under the hood. And, you know, hmm, that's strange, isn't it? Oh, wow, no car. <laughs> I mean, I thought, you know, it was just kind of, okay, clearly something's wrong with it, it's going to need some time in the shop. No, it went to the shop. They said, we can't work on this thing without it blowing up. I'm exaggerating a trifle, but that that basically what it works to. So I had to get another car. And it's been weeks of looking for cars. And, ugh, you know, I'm, it's, it's, it's very boring and frustrating. And I, 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 won't, I won't burden you with it. But suffice it to say, I finally got another car. And it's a nice car. Um, uh, who knows, maybe you'll see it in a future video. You know, who knows? Everything's a prop. But, for, for, anyway, so I've been without a car for the, the past few weeks, and so I wasn't able to see, um, House with a Clock in Its Walls, and I was just barely able to see, uh, Venom, which is the, you know, as you know, the the subject of this review. Um, I, if it had gone another week or so, it probably would have left theaters. So this is, you know, that's why this is a somewhat of a late review. I wasn't able to pounce on it early like I normally can. But anyway, um, so let's get just get on to. Film. I've been looking forward to this to this movie for quite a while, actually. Um, uh, you know, I I had heard that. You know, there's been rumors for a long time that Sony was planning, um, was planning a Venom film, um, and I was all for it, because, because Venom is, is one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite Spider-Man characters, um, I haven't read a whole lot of comics with, with him in them, you know, I've read, like, a few here and there, but, um, you know, I haven't read anything in him that that sucked, you know. It's always he's always been an interesting character, his great look. Um and incidentally, uh let me just give you a recommendation here. If you ever want to um if if you want to uh check out like a a, a good sort of a thing with Venom in it, I would read this, The Venom Factor from by Diane Duane. It's a, you know, proper, not, not a comic, a proper novel, um, 
Spider-Man spin-off novel from the night from when, when was it from? When is it from? Um, Ninety-four. Um, so, yeah, it's you know this was from when Venom was at, probably at the, I guess at the height of his popularity. I don't remember when he was when he was introduced exactly, but this was you know we when he was still pretty freaking popular. Um, and it's this this is this is an excellent book and it's got two sequels um and i recommend you you check them all out Diane Duane is a great writer anyway so um first i suppose i'm guessing most of you will know who venom in the comics is but a brief i'll just give you a brief you know for compare and contrasting in the comics uh venom was first created uh when Spider-Man was on another planet and he wrecked his suit, you know, the typical sort of sort of red and blue spider duds. And he's like, oh, I got another suit. And he got what he thought was another suit. And it was this real stylish new black and white suit that did everything for him. But it turns out that it did everything for him because it wasn't really a suit. It was a symbiote. It was a, a you know, an intelligent creature that was acting in symbiosis with him. And this freaked it out freaked him out. He got and he got rid of it. And so then it hated him now. And it teamed up um with another person who hated him, who was Eddie Brock, who was a journalist who'd been discredited by Peter Parker and his career had been wrecked. So between the two the the, the two of them, you know, Eddie Bro Brock started wearing wearing the the symbiote and, you know, the the two formed a close bond as Venom, and they've been trying to, you know, and he, he, he's had a heroic side as well, um, and that's, that's, you know, he's had, he's, he's kind of, he's part villain, part anti-hero, he goes back and forth between the two a lot, um, but, yeah, that's him in the comics. In the movie, and let's go into what's what's in the movie. Um, in the movie, Eddie Brock is still um, is still a journalist, but he has nothing to do with with uh, Spider-Man in this in this case. Um, he's uh, at least nothing. I'll get into that, but. Uh, he he lives and works in San Francisco, which is his hometown in the, in the comics, and and um, and he uh, is a successful journalist um, until he runs afoul of uh, what's his name, Carlton Drake, um, who is this sort of big time sort of rich guy head of a scientific. It's called the Life Foundation, you know, and he's kind of a he's a kind of a big name, and you know, but he's 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 the villain, and when when Eddie asks a few too many questions, he gets his he he kind of like, okay, you know, I'm pulling some strings. His you know, it's, it's like so his his career gets wrecked, and um, his girlfriend leaves him, and it is it's basically his fault. I mean, it's the villain's fault, fault, but it's Eddie's because he, he, well, you'll see if you watch the movie. But then this is where the symbiotes, um, the symbiote business enters into it. Carlton Drake, uh, has been exploring outer space. He's been sending out, um, rockets into outer space to, um, to see what he can find. And he's found you know, a bunch of these symbiotes, and you know, brought some back, and he's uh, uh, doing some sort of nasty stuff to try and, because you know, they're symbiotes, they need to match with a human. He's trying to like, why won't it work? You know, I'm going to, I'm going to test it on. I'm going to, to, you know, speed up the testing in immoral ways, and Eddie gets wind of this, and he's still, you know, he's still a reporter, and he does not like, you know, Carlton Drake, so he tries to uncover this, and the long short of it is he gets, 
Um, uh, he gets a symbiote um, on him slash in him, and uh, basically, you know, they become they well they become Venom, and they're going up against Carlton Drake, who has mm, that's the movie. So, um, as I understand it, this is kind of a divisive film for some. Like, some people really like it, some people really don't like it. And one of the the reasons in the don't like business, um, the, the don't like camp, is because uh, it doesn't, it feels too 90s. It feels like sort of a throwback to like the 90s, uh superhero movies I I don't get that at all I mean you know this is a problem I mean I I personally I love 90s superhero you know comic book movies and I mean you know yeah the, we've, we've gotten some good ones recently and everything but the 90s yeah I mean you, you know I, I've mentioned before I, I'm a big fan of of Batman Returns I know not everyone likes that but you know, that's '90s. The freak. You know, the the crow, uh, blade. Um, I haven't seen the blade sequels, but those are supposed to. You know, I have their fans. Uh, I believe the first X Men movie was '90s or like '99 or 2000. Whatever. You know, you know, this that whole era of comic book movies should not be. Um, poo pooed just because they're not the the current stuff that everybody likes. Yeah, um, but I, I I do agree it has a bit of that air about it. But I don't think that's a bad thing. It doesn't necessarily like a point in its favor, but it's not certainly not a point against it. As for you know the rest, I think they think it's just kind of is too goofy, um, and. Uh, well, first off, I have heard, and I don't take this as gospel because I don't know. This is just like something I came heard somebody say. But apparently, uh, Tom Hardy, as you probably know, has said there were, was a lot cut out of this movie to make it a PG 13. And, like, and there is a a small chance that that footage could be uh, put back in for like uh, a DVD release, you know, once it's released on. I don't know that this is true. I've heard someone say this, mention it as a possibility, and that person was someone who tends to know what they're talking about when they're talking about film. So, but, so, if you think it's too goofy, it's a very, there's a possibility that, you know, you wait a bit, you get something not quite so goofy, you know. Um, but I will agree it is a bit goofy, but I don't really think that's a huge problem either. I mean, Venom has always... Part of the the, the character's draw is that he, he has kind of a kooky sense of humor. He's, he's like cracking jokes and everything while he's trying to catch Spider-Man so he can eat his brain, you know, I mean, it's, it, you know, he's like a monster with a sense of humor, I mean, and that's, that's kind of part of his whole vibe, even at his darkest, you know, he's kind of got this kind of a, <laughs> sort of, so, I didn't have a problem with that, um, uh, I think, I guess I'll go into the, the, the bits I did kind of have a problem with. And some of them are kind of the, the little nerdy things. Um, first off, I was a little, you know, I was a, a little disappointed that um, that Venom didn't have, like, the, the classic sort of white spider. I mean, I know, you know, he in this version he doesn't have any connection with Spider-Man, but um, <clears throat> still, it would have been kind of like, you know, it would have been easy enough to, like, you know, he calls himself Venom. You know, it's like, you could just, he, you could create a spider connection that doesn't have anything to do with Spider-Man, right? You could. You really could. 
just you know but and it's it's i kind of the character i mean i've heard it like he apparently like he, you know he's got like a white sort of tracing of of veins on his front and it's supposed to like oh you know that's that's the equivalent of the the spiders like <sighs> Look, I only noticed that after I'd seen the movie and read the thing saying that it was supposed to be there. It's, you know, yeah, I can see it now, but it's no substitute. I just thought it was like, you know, just kind of a, a background detail thing that's like, I don't know. It was, that was disappointing. Second, uh, you know, is is the fact that he's not that Spider-Man is nowhere in this movie because I think like the Venom Spider-Man relationship is one of the most fascinating uh, hero villain relationships in comics because they're not always I mean you know sometimes they team up sometimes Venom just wants to straight up kill uh, Peter Parker and and let the symbiote devour various different parts of his anatomy. And sometimes they're they're f even friends for a brief period. It's like, it, it's kind of a, this, you know, love, hate, uh, endure, sort of, it's, you know. And it, it's a really uh, interesting relationship. And they did kind of leave it open. That, like, they mentioned that Brock, you know, used to live in New York City and he left to go to San Francisco and there might have been, you know, and there's like a reason, you know, that they mentioned like the paper that he worked at there, which was the paper he worked in the comics that he got kicked out of. And it's like, maybe there's some backstory there. It's, it's, it's you could, it could be tied into it. Um, I know that Sony has some future plans for the character and possibly Spider-Man 2 if they can finagle it. It's like this is supposed to be set theoretically in the same universe as the Spider-Man Homecoming, which is the MCU, but the, the, the studio politics. But um, So, we, you know, I hope we'll, we'll see Spider-Man and Venom together at some point. But, um... Oh, yeah, and, uh, okay, I guess this is moving on from, from the nerdy bits to the actual critiques. This, uh, this film does not have a very good ending. Um, it's kind of, it reminds me of, of how one, of the Wonder Woman thing. Uh, if, you, if you haven't seen my review of Wonder Woman, um, my main complaint with that film is that the ending sucked. You know, the, the rest of the film was, was pretty good, I thought. Um, I wouldn't would have even said it was a great movie, except for that one that one sort of chunk at the end where it's just special effects, special effects, special effects. You know, explosions, 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 explosions. <laughs> um, and noise and shouting, and oh, it was a mess. And Venom is was it wasn't quite as bad as an ending as all that. But the problem is, you know, and this is the problem with the, the, the film in general, is that Venom is a, you know, a shape-shifting, you know, and it's all done with, with, with you know, CGI, of course. Um, and, uh, uh, oh, heck with it. This, this is hardly a spoiler. I mean, it's like, this, this is something you'll be able to see a million miles away. It's... Venom fights a symbiote, you know. You know, he's a symbiote, and the, the, the big bad guy also, well, he also gets a symbiote on him. Um, and they fight! And it's... The problem is it's two sh different shape-shifting characters who look very much the same. Um, and it's like... It's kind of a really uh, not a great decision, if you ask me. I get the the logic behind like this having a symbiote, you know, fight another symbiote because it's like you know uh, a bigger, you know, a bigger and badder version of yourself. That's that's a common sort of thing, but it's like you've got one sort of shape shifting gooey mass up against another shape-shifting gooey mask, mass. And one is black, and one is gray. And the gray one is just a bigger and stronger version of the black one. And it's like... 
over. <laughs> it's like you can't see what's going on. You really can't. And it's like the film kind of lost me there. Um, it, that, that was it wasn't a very long sort of thing, and it was it was kind of you know, it's it, it wasn't terrible. It was just kind of chaotic, and I did it, it kind of like I I, I could have written a better one than that, but whatever. Um, um and. Yeah, and the, the tone kind of went up and down in parts, so... Yeah, it wasn't a great movie. But I do think it was a decent movie. I, I do. There are things about this film that I quite like. The whole relationship between Eddie and, uh, and Venom... You know, in this case, the symbiote is just straight up named Venom. Which, actually, no, that, that is something that I... I get another kind of fanboy gripe. You know, in the comics, he was named Venom because of the Spider-Man connection. You know, spiders, Venom, ah. You know? And this one is just kind of like, the symbiote just kind of casually says, I'm Venom! And it's like, you're an alien. Why are you called Venom? You know? And why is the other symbiote called Riot? And isn't, you know, Riot was like, this kind of like a, a, a foot, sort of a foot soldier character. You know, in the comics, as I understand it. I haven't actually read that but, you know, he was part of a group. He was one symbi other symbiote against m many, among many, who went up against Venom. And Anyway, um, that was kind of silly. But, yeah, it's Eddie and Venom, um, as opposed to the two of them being Venom. But, 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 I, 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 I like, like, because <laughs> they, they do um, have kind of good chemistry with each other. You know, Tom Hardy is a good actor, as I'm sure you know. Um, and it, apparently he actually did perform the Venom symbiote as well. So it is chemi I mean, chemically, it's, it's, you know, altered. You know, it's an altered in post to sound more more sort of menacing and alien, but, but it is his voice and he's delivering the lines and it's, you know... Um, so it's kind of, it, it is kind of funny, it's like, you know, the, the, Eddie is kind of this, uh, he's kind of one of those sort of self-defeating sort of characters, in that, you know, he's, he is, he's very well-meaning, he, 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 he does, you know, he wants to be a good journalist and take down the bad guys and everything, but it's like, he, he kind of has this mentality of he'll do whatever he has to, as opposed to going through the proper channels and the checking stuff out and, and, you know, not taking a few steps, which you probably shouldn't have, which keeps getting him in trouble time after time, so he's kind of this, you know, bit of a sad sack. But, you know, and, you know, he's being taken over by the Venom symbiote. It's like, you know, I'm going crazy. <laughs> and meanwhile, um, meanwhile, the, the, the symbiote, Venom, is kind of this, you know, brain-eating monster. But at the same time, he, he kind of has this, these weird quirks, like he likes tater tots. And, you know, he's kind of, he kind of sort of teases Eddie and, you know, calls him a loser. Um, and it's kind of, you know, like, <laughs> at one point he's like, let's jump off this building. He's like, no. I was like, you wimp. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, it's slightly stronger language. You know, it's, it's, that's the sort of, it, it's, it's a good interplay. And, and it's, it's, those are probably the best bits. Um, is the bit between the two. Um, Michelle Williams plays Anne Weying, who starts off as fiancé, ultimately becomes, uh, you know, his ex. Um, and it's kind of, it's an, one, of, one of those sorts of things where he still has feelings for her. She, for, for a reason I won't go into because it's spoilers, um, has kind of, has moved on from him, but she still, um, she still has a soft spot for him somewhere in her makeup, you know. And it's it's kind of it's an interesting dynamic. Also, 
you know, another nerdy thing. Um, she becomes she venom briefly at one point. The, the, very briefly. And I'm not telling you where or how, you'll just have to watch for it. But that's a nice sort of nod to the comics because it, it, um, uh, that, you know, that happens in the comics too. And it's, it's, it's kind of one of those bits that people off, you know, tend to remember. And actually, there's a lot of nods to the comics. I'm not super conversant with, like, the Venom line of, you know, his, his, his title that ran for a while in the 90s. But apparently a lot of these names and things are taken pretty much directly from that. Um... Like there's one character I can't remember his name, but he's like he's like the head of security for the 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 Life Foundation, and he's he's taken directly from the comics as well. You know, it's it's like the things have been have been rearranged and so forth. But if you if you know and like the comics, you will find a lot to. Oh, you know they included that. Oh, like like one as um. There's one brief mention of like Jonah Jameson, J. Jonah Jameson's son. Like being one of Carlton Drake's astronauts, and he is an astronaut in um, in the comics. In fact, if you remember Spider-Man Two, he's an astronaut there. Um, so it's it's a nice kind of like yeah, cool. We're remembering that Carlton Drake himself is played by Riz Ahmed, and he's kind of I kind of like him. I kind of don't. I like his. Uh, the way his character, the way he's portrayed is actually kind of interesting. He's one of those kind of like charismatic science guru types who clearly believes very, very strongly and you know he's 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 an idealist. He wants to make the world better. It's just that he 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 wants to make the world better so much that he has no problem with, you know, making it worse in the he is completely amoral in how he goes about it. It's like look you know, never mind the the niceties. We gotta save the planet, even if we've got to kill some people to do it, you know. Um, and it's like, he's the sort of person who could you can tell, you know, he, he would inspire a lot of people and get, like, some sort of starry-eyed grad students, like, you know, oh, wow, Carlton Drake, I want to work with him! You know, it's, it's, it's that, that sort of... And then there's a bit where it's, you know, there's like a, a school tour of the place, and um, a little girl, you know, kind of raises her hand, like, Mr. Drake, I want to ask a question. And he gives like an inspiring speech, like, Good, you should always, you should always ask questions, you know, what's your name? Go, oh, good, you know. And he never actually answers her question, which kind of, kind of sums up his character. Um, uh, but that being said, it's kind of. Ultimately, you know, he is kind of the big evil corporate guy who wants to, you know, who who wants to do bad things. Okay, and we've seen this a million times. And also, it's kind of like, so what? You you want to save the world through you know slobbering slime aliens with great big pointy teeth? It's like. Yeah, I mean, you know, these these things are, are like nightmares come to life, you know. That they're 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 blob monsters from another planet. They're you know they're horrible things. It's like you know, oh oh, they're so beautiful. Oh, you know, it's it's, it's kind of he's one of those villains, kind of either he's supposed to be crazy or he's just so wrapped up in his ideals that that he, he can't see clearly anymore. And, I mean, you know, that's an interesting tack to take, but it kind of goes a little far, I think. Um, anyway, um, I guess I should probably wrap up now. I've said most of the... Um, do I recommend the film? Uh, yes. Uh, overall, I think I do. It's not a perfect film by any means, and it's not, like, one of the best I've ever seen, but... It does, you know, and it, it does suffer from some tonal inconsistencies here and there. Like one moment, it's really, it's really kind of light. Another, it's it's um, it's really dark, and it's kind of, you know, there's some connecting material that probably didn't. But um, but still, the stuff I like, I do like, and I I will say, I I if you're going to have like a dark comedy 
sort of character. I prefer something like this over, like, the Deadpool movies. I know a lot of people like the Deadpool movies, um, and, you know, I don't hate them, but they're just not really my sort of thing. But I like Venom, and this is not is not really inconsistent with how Venom has been portrayed. I do, you know, I miss Spider-Man and all that stuff, but it's... Uh, this is not a bad Venom movie. And it, you know, we might get some more Venom movies in the future. Certainly, you know, certainly Sony is planning to. Um, so, I would, I would, I would check this out. You know, see if you like it or not. You know, some people clearly don't. But other people are saying, yeah, this ain't bad. And I'm, I'm one of the latter. So, yeah, that's my take on Venom. Uh... Uh, probably, probably another, you know, more movie reviews coming down the pike before too long. I mean, you know, we're finally, we're getting into, like, the the beginnings of, like, the holiday movie season. So, so you know, it should be, you know, there's some coming out later this month. And I, you know, I have a car now, so I can, I can do it. Um... But in the meantime, uh, that was my take on the Venom movie, and, uh, yeah, see ya.